Alright guys, so I promised you last time we were going to buy some new players. I delivered, I think. We've got a cracker of an episode here. This is going to be a good one. First up, I said we needed a new defender. I picked up Soyunku, who was an ex Leicester player. Uh, when they went down, we tried to get him, but he went to Young Boys instead. But he was back available. He didn't last long. Performed well for Young Boys. Um, but for whatever reason, they've sold him. We picked him up for a good good price, 60 million. Apparently he's worth 20. Key things, good jumping. Good jumping. Positioning could be a little bit better. Determination, good bravery. Marking and tackling 16s, heading 14, that's fine. He'll get to the ball, it just might go in a random position. Uh, really strengthens us at the back. 60k per week. We'll, we'll live with that. And then the boy. Right back. Kenny Tete. This boy's, this boy's pretty good. 14 marking, 17 tackling. All the good physicals. Good positioning. Nice passing as well. 12 passing will do. He's, he's a great little player. He'll slot in uh, first choice right back. No problem. And for him, we paid 13 and a half million. We did look at some young lads, however, the market is expensive. Harry Wilson is currently on the market at like 35, is he at 35? Okay, he's at 20 million. They want 20 million for Harry Wilson. He's good. If he had a bit more pace, he's just not, he's just not world class. He's, he's good, but not world class. Ehiterin? Ehiterin? Uh, this this lad looks brilliant, but he's going to cost 66 million. So not quite a bargain to be found there. We couldn't get him. Esposito looks brutal, but he again he's going to he's going to cost up in the 90s to try and get hold of him. So we couldn't quite afford him either. Fabio Silva as well. Nice little player, huge jump in, also going to cost us in the 90s. Can't quite, can't quite go for that much money, unfortunately. Even Thomas Buitink, 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 Buitink. I like him, I think he could play across the front line. But even he's going to cost us like 70, 80 mil at the moment. So we couldn't quite bring in a top youngster that we really wanted. Uh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to wait till summer. There's a couple of younger lads. This Bruno Zappelli uh, looks pretty handy, although he's not got the finishing which we'd ideally like to contribute to the goals. So yeah, although we didn't bring in a wonder kid, we also had some issues in that Harland, the Messiah, decided he could get better football elsewhere. And he wanted to leave. Now he's got a minimum fee release clause of 91 million. And we weren't we weren't budging from that. Fortunately, we managed to hold on to him. However, if you can look at the list of interest from clubs. Man United, Man City, Napoli, Madrid, Barcelona, Gladbach and Dortmund. Everybody wants him. That's because he's awesome. So his head's been turned. But we've managed to hold on to him through January. The same with our man Siginkov. It's mainly Bayern that want him, but Valencia as well. They've been bidding for him, but nobody's met the release clause. So again, we've managed to hold on to him. However, in summer, we might not be able to keep him in. So, we need a good finish to the season here to get us up higher up the table, get us a bit more reputation and allow us to attract slightly better players that could replace these boys. So that brings us on to how we've been getting on. So straight after that Man United game in the last episode, we played Fulham in the FA Cup. And they went ahead. One of those low corners. Low corners, low crosses. That he just gets in ahead of the defender and pokes it in. However, Manchester City Loney Gurry nods, well I say nods, hits a spectacular volley. 
from the back post. One all, we go to a replay. Here continues a horrific run of fixtures that we had, starting with Man City away. We lost 3-0, but we played really, really well. Man City had a lot of chances, but Edison saved them so many times. We got a good team out, full team out. We just didn't quite perform and put the ball in the goal. They got Nathan Ake, who put them ahead in like the 67th minute. Smash, smash one. It overlapping left back and right back causes some issues. But then we, it was close. It was close all the way to the end, and then I went full attacking, um, and then we got caught out twice. So here's Joao Felix going to be picked out. Look at that. It's another one of those edge of the box ones. So many edge of the box goals that get scored in this game. And then Harry Kane from a free kick makes it 3-0. So, important point which will become clear. From this game onwards, all we changed was this right midfield that's normally an advanced playmaker. I switched him to an inside forward just so we got a little bit more going forward a little bit more in the box and not two playmakers playing wide just one of them we got one deep playmaker one playing wide and getting one inside winger getting in the box one advanced playmaker over here as well we went to Fulham and in the 73rd minute nice ball over the top Gurry playing in the Haaland position Gurry slots it in 1-0 solid at the back we progress in the FA Cup. The dream of silverware is still on for this season. Our horrific league fixture list continues. I don't change anything for this match. Still got that inside winger playing. We take on Arsenal and we marmalise them. We're absolutely brilliant. We get a penalty in the 19th minute. Then we have Gurry coming in off the left. Look at this, gets around the player, slots it in near post, keeper can do nothing about it. Then Hayden gets in on the action, sliding in from a corner that's aiming corners at the near post has definitely been the most fruitful option for me. Going back post, the ball goes over them too much. But near post, if it misses the near post, there's a bit of carnage in the box and we get some chances. And to round it off, Terry, I'll check this out. Picks up the ball deep, runs past them, smashes it in. 4 0 against the Arsenal, guys. Glorious. This is followed by going away to Chelsea. Same team, keep on going. We get off to a great start in the first minute. Siginkov with a lovely dribble finds Terry, who slots it in. 1 0. Two minutes later, Olmo takes the ball, runs around two defenders. I don't know what the keeper's doing there. Olmo smashes it in 2-0. Then check this out from Lascelles. Corner, bit of carnage. Lascelles, turn, boom. Top bins. Three against Chelsea. It's crazy how one small change to the formation um, has really started this going. And then, to round it all up, Moriba, bang, bottom corner, 4-0. Now, the top six were miles and miles ahead in points at this stage, and we managed to reel them right back in. We weren't actually making it into the top six, but we were getting close. Next round of the FA Cup comes along in January. We take on Millwall with our reserves. Same formation, but Matty Longstaff. Puts us ahead. Long range shots from outside the box. There's a lot scored. And then Yannick Torre in a rare start. He's not a bad finisher actually. Gets one over the top. Left footed volley coming from over the shoulder is a beautiful goal. 2-0. We're through to the 6th round. Is that, is that quarter final 6th round? I don't know. We'll have a look at the draw. Back to the league. Wolves come and visit us. Now... I can do slight tactical tweaks. It's exactly the same player setup. However, all we do is we drop 
um, a striker down into a, an attacking midfielder role who's on attack. And also we drop a midfielder alongside to a defensive midfielder. It plays pretty much the same. It just accommodates having a midfielder rather than a second striker. And it just gives us a bit of shielding in the, in the back. Everybody's um, everybody's assignments are still the same. We're we're flying here, guys. We're not conceding goals, and we're doing we're doing all of the goal scoring. This season's new signing, Danny Olmo, is starting to come into his own here now. Harlan picks out Olmo. Olmo puts it in. One nil. Not to be outdone, Siginkov coming off off the line in that new inside winger role. And then Terry, it's Siginkov that makes this. But Terry's, Terry's goal scoring has been brilliant for us this season. Considering he's not got the best stats, it was definitely our my best signing of the first season. And then you know you're in trouble when Joel Linton's scoring. A mix up at the back, Joe Linton pokes home. And to round it off, Moriba with a free kick, 5 0. That's what? 11 0 in the last three games in the league. Brilliant. With our newfound confidence, we go and take on Man City. We play very well, but we don't. We Man City are hard. Man City are really good. We lose to a f single Phil Foden goal, which shows where we've come from, considering we recently played Man City at the start of this episode and lost three nil. Complete mess up from the keeper. That's all it was. To be fair, Butland did make a lot of good saves later in the game to make up for that, but 1-0 loss. And as if things were going too well, we go and take on Liverpool, who are brilliant. They play really, really wide, and they cause us all kinds of issues. I'm going to rattle through these so we can see where our weaknesses lie. Nice little cross. They they play so wide and they really stretch us. And then the big crosses from side to side. Jabala. Near post though. Not great. Gunn didn't have his greatest game, but the hitting was on the break and everything. Oh and Hayden. Hayden doesn't do well there. This all brings us back to earth with a, a bump. Screamer outside the outside the D. Alexander Arnold rampaging down the wing. He just did everybody. Another screamer. Maybe we're not packing the midfield enough there. I feel like I've watched twenty of these now, but here we go. Ugh. Keeper, just make any saves, and we get a consolation. Matty Longstaff finds Moriba, puts one in. He's not doing bad, Moriba. He's constantly unhappy. He's not happy that I didn't sign somebody else from Barcelona alongside him, which is annoying. So. It's the second half of the season, and we have played all the good teams, apart from maybe Bournemouth, who are surprisingly very good. Taking a bit of a hit to the confidence, but I think the formation is very solid, and we want... We're aiming to win most of these games now. Other than the Bournemouth one, I don't see why we can't get wins against all of these guys. So assuming everything stays... Stays... Good. Um, we can really push for Europe. In terms of the league... We're still just outside the top seven. That last the last couple of defeats have hit us quite hard. But considering the run we've got now, I think we can definitely make up, what is it, five points? It's a battle for that seventh place. If we can just squeak into Europe, I think that'd be great, if not further. Also, there's the FA Cup, which if we get a kind run and stay away from the blooming 
Liverpool and Man City hell. Maybe, maybe we can do it, guys. So, it's Tottenham today, and we're on to our match. Right, so here's our team. New boy, Soyunku plays. Because it's been a couple of days since we played Liverpool, everybody who played Liverpool is quite tired. We've got Grimares, who's out to an injury for another few days, and sigmundkov has got a bit of a, a an injury himself, as does Jalinton. It doesn't seem to show here, but he's taken a knock. That leaves us with Sean Longstaff in the middle, which is one place we really could improve in midfield. Uh, and we've got Moriba as our inside forward. His stats look nice. He's only 19 years old as well. There's there's definite progress to be made with Moriba. So, on to the game. The media have been on your backs. Get those greens. Yes, that's what we like. Right, here we go. Kick off. Let's go, boys. Well, straight from the off. Haaland. Out wide. Go on, Moriba. Go on, hit it. Oh! Off the post. Good start, good start. We're seeing a lot of action early on, but we've not had any highlights. Ooh. Nodded over. They've got Deli Alley playing up front for them. He's not got the physicals to hurt us. Look how far forward everybody is. Come on, Moriba. Get a ball in. Olmo! Oh, over. This is good, guys. We like it. This is good. Come on, guys. Give us a bit more. The We owe the team, after what happened in our last match, go out there and get revenge. Always seems to give us greens. Maybe that's a benefit of losing every time. So I've managed to squeak Sigankov into the team. He's not actually injured. So I might be able to bring him on in a bit, because Moriba's body language isn't great. So we might look to bring him on later, maybe the 60th minute, try and create something. Other than that, it's the team we're stuck with. Everybody's everybody's exhausted on the bench. Come on, guys, let's get this goal. Ooh, highlight. This is scary all the way at the back. Oh, well played out, boys. Well played. No, don't pass it to the... Oh, I said it too early. Winks. Winks shoots wide, right. Without either Sigankov or Guimaraes, we are struggling to create. So let's get him on. We're going to bring on Hayden for long stuff as well. Goo! Almost, almost nods it in from a free kick. Let's have him tackled here, boys. No, not from the, not from out wide. It's a corner. Hmm. I don't like it giving them a corner in a highlight. Oh, that's fine. We're safe. Come on, Sigankov. Make something for us. Oh, dear. Good work. Here we go. Olmo. Charging through. I believe. I believe. Oh, good save. Let's get this ball in. We're not very good at working it into the box. He says, sick and cough. Oh, wide. I've really been liking Matty Longstaff's contribution, so we're putting him on now. See if we can get anything in the last. Get creative. A few minutes. And actually, we're going to keep a sassy bar back just in case we get hit on the counter. Come on, give us something. Oh dear, don't give them something. No, no, they're over the top, Sir Archie. Don't give it away. Good work, Butland. Nice. Come on, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Yo. Oh, the highlights. I don't know if my heart can take this. I almost coughed it up. No, no, I don't like this. It's a banana ball bending over the bar. Mm, they passed it around our front line nicely there. Sirachi gets it away to Olmo. Don't 
don't cough it up. Oh, can't get that ball forward. That's going out of play. Oh, it's desperate highlights there. That looks like a nil nil end. Yep. Okay, not the worst. So in terms of the Premier League, we are just at we're a little bit outside the European spots. Chelsea have not played two games. So they could be quite away. They, it could be as much as 10 points. We're going to have to claw this back in in the second half of the season here now. Like I said, we've got a great run coming up. So hopefully we can. I, I believe we can claw this back. Also got the FA Cup fifth round coming up against Sunderland. Ooh, that's that looks a good one. Probably when we'll be back for. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll catch you soon in a bit.